May I have your attention, please? <clears throat> Today is a truly an historic day for the Salk Institute. More than 50 years ago, Jonas Salk came up with a discovery, the polio vaccine, that changed the world. He then went on with a vision to create a unique research center where he could bring together the very best and brightest scientists from around the world who would have the freedom and creativity to work together to make seminal discoveries that also would change the world uh, by improving our understanding of the human condition, giving doctors the ability to treat and heal patients. Today, we continue that legacy with the single largest gift in the history of the Salk Institute. I'm pleased to announce the Helmsley Center for Genomic Medicine. This is a research center dedicated to decoding the common genetic factors underlying many complex chronic human diseases. This $42 million gift from the Helmsley Charitable Trust will support research that paves the way for new therapies for illnesses such as cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease. Broadly defined, genomic medicine is the science of using maps of DNA, human DNA, our chromosomes, or called the genome, in order to understand how our cells operate both in health and disease. The Helmsley Center for Genomic Medicine will allow our researchers to use the genomic data and powerful new technologies to decipher the molecular and genetic mechanisms that go awry in chronic illness. The center will include scientists who are leaders in a range of biomedical, biomedical research fields, including stem cell biology, endocrinology, cancer biology, metabolism, neurobiology, developmental biology, inflammation, and gene therapy. These creative scientists will combine their efforts to understand how, cel how cellular pathways serve as linchpins for chronic illness. The Helmsley gift will provide vital funding to enable our scientists per to pursue the kinds of transformative scientific discoveries and advancements that we hope will have worldwide impact on people's health for generations to come. I'd now like to invite the chair of the Salk Board of Trustees and the chair of the campaign for the Salk, Dr. Erwin Jacobs. Erwin. Thank you, Bill, and thank you all for being here. This is indeed a very exciting time for science at the Salk Institute. Just a couple of months ago, we all stood in this courtyard and embarked on a once-in-a-lifetime campaign, the launch of the Campaign for Salk. Today marks another major milestone in the history of the Institute. Thanks to the Helmsley Charitable Trust, this $42 million gift will help secure groundbreaking research at Salk for the next several decades. I'm pleased to announce that we have now raised nearly $200 million toward our goal of $300 million. So, great progress. The campaign is critical as will enable our scientists to accelerate the pace of innovative discoveries, secure funding for the highest scientific priorities, and help us continue and recruit the very best biological scientists in the world. On behalf of the Salk's Board of Trustees, the millions of cancer, Alzheimer's, and diabetes patients who will benefit from this gift to research, we thank the Helmsley Charitable Trust for their commitment and belief in our pursuit to find new therapies and cures for the most challenging illnesses in our lifetime. Thank you. Thank you very much. I now have the pleasure of introducing John Cody, who is a trustee for the Helmsley Charitable Trust. And before I ask John to come up to the podium, I think I want to share with you how involved John and his staff was with the, in the developing this partnership. It was a true collaborative effort. We had a vision to ensure that the Helmsley Center for Genomic Medicine would have a significant impact on science. John, thank you for all you've done and for your support, and please come up. 
the podium. Thank you, Bill and Irwin. Jonas Salk once said, there is hope in dreams, imagination, and in the courage of those who wish to make those dreams a reality. He was a visionary, not only in science, but in philanthropy as well. And he saw the powerful intersection of these two fields. The initiative that we are announcing today is the perfect embodiment of Jonas Salk's words and vision. Through the Helmsley Center for Genomic Medicine, Salk is assembling a dream team of scientists who will collaborate and build upon their groundbreaking work across multiple biomedical research fields and address some of the most urgent questions in medical science today. This is a third grant in which we have worked together with our colleagues at SOC. Before our first grant in 2009, we were well aware of and of course drawn by the fact that salt scientists were among the very best in their fields. But since then, we have developed a much more profound appreciation of how remarkable they really are. We've witnessed firsthand their exceptional commitment, creativity, passion, and support for one another. And in their pursuit of scientific breakthroughs that will, and I say will, positively affect and have an impact on the lives of millions. These are the qualities that make the SALK team and their unique cross-laboratory initiatives stand out. And, by the way, these are very special people. Clearly, we at SALK are big believers in the sensational work being done here. We look forward to continuing our wonderful relationship with Salk, and we eagerly await the extraordinary advances that the Salk Helmsley Center for Genomic Medicine will produce, and I say will produce, in the years and decades to come. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. I now have the honor of introducing some of our top scientists involved with the Helmsley Center. The all-star team of SALK scientists includes project leader Inder Verma, uh, Rusty Gage, Ron Evans, Juan Carlos Belmonte, Ruben Shaw, and Mark Montmany. Our first speaker today is one of the world's leading authorities in the development and use of engineered viruses for gene therapy. His innovations have revolutionized gene therapy, stem cell and cancer research, and other areas of molecular biology. Inder Verma is the American Cancer Society Professor of Molecular Biology in the Salk Institute's Laboratory of Genetics, and he holds the Erwin Mark Jacobs Chair in Exemplary Life Science. Inder? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Bill. I would also first like to start by thanking the Helmsley Charitable Trust for this extraordinary generosity, and especially to John and to Anne Cody for their support of our science, and more importantly, their sustained friendship with the SOC Institute. For years, many of us at the SOC, several of them present here today, have been talking about the basic idea that could it be 
that inflammation is the key cause of many chronic diseases like cancer, metabolism, obesity, diabetes, Alzheimer, Parkinson, and variety of other acquired diseases in our lifetime. And could we find some common fundamental principles among these diseases, and could we learn something which will have a major benefit to human health? Now, inflammation is a double-edged sword. We need it. Every day, you and I are exposed to hundreds and thousands of pathogens, from bacteria to viruses to fungi, and somebody has to fight them as soon as they attack us. These inflammatory molecules are responsible for this fight every day. But they don't all withdraw completely after they have done their job. A little bit of it is left every time. And that accumulates over a lifetime. And that's what leads to what we call chronic inflammation. And that becomes a source of irritation for the cell of wide variety of different diseases. So what we would like to know is that what is different between the individuals who are not affected by this disease, these diseases versus those who are. We know there are about 20, 25 steps which are involved in the inflammatory processes. We know pretty much their biochemical entities, but we don't know what's the difference. And to study that difference now, we have the opportunity because for the first time in the last couple of years, we have been able to decipher the human genome sequence, to decipher the proteins that are involved in our daily functioning, the metabolites that are uh, responsible for much of what we do. And for that, you need technology, a very rapidly moving technology, expensive technology. And what the Helmsley Foundation in this genomic center will allow us to do is to build these technologies so we can actually make a difference to begin to study the difference between normal versus the diseased individuals. More importantly, these technologies will also allow the rest of the Salk Institute to begin to get interested in these kind of technologies to help their work also. So we believe that this is a great opportunity for us to do something fundamentally very important, and we hope that the funds provided to us will allow us in the next few years to at least come to some understanding of this hypothesis, if not wholly, but at least substantially, that we hope the Helmsley Foundation will be proud to see that their contribution to our science has made a great difference to humanity in the long run. So once again, thank you very much for this great generosity. Thank you, Inder. Our next researcher showed in a groundbreaking experiment that the human brain actually produces nerve cells into adulthood. Until then, it had been assumed, as I was taught in high school biology, that the brain was born with so many neurons and they die every day and then after that you're toast. Um, but in fact, uh, Fred, Rusty Gage, we know him better as Rusty, really changed the field in a dramatic way by discovering that the adult brain cell, the, the adult brain produces new nerve cells. A professor in the Laboratory of Genetics and the holder of the V and, and John Adler Chair for Research on Age-Related Degenerative Diseases, please join me in welcoming Rusty Gage to the podium. Thanks, Bill. Uh, first, I'd like to add my thanks to the Helmsley Foundation and to Anne and John Cody for their visionary insight in supporting the Salk Institute for Genomic Medicine. I'd like also to thank my colleagues uh, and congratulate them for coming together and developing a program that synergizes the best we have to offer. I'm confident that this will be a very productive collaboration between these two great institutions. The prevalence of chronic and age-related disorders uh, is increasing in the population and in part because of better survival and uh, knowledge about genetic diseases. The development of new therapies has proven to be challenging. In some measure, uh, the experimental tools that we've used in the past in vitro cultures, animal models, recapitulate only some of the specific traits of these human diseases. Heart failure, neurocognitive deficits, arthrosclerosis, diabetes are all cases in point. As a result, and despite huge investments by the pharmaceutical industry, Few new therapies, compounds, are presently entering the market. 
However, recent advances in reprogram tech, reprogramming technology that allow somatic cells from the body to be modified into specific stem cells called, called induced pluripotent cells or IPS cells may, may soon change this. Human IPS cells in principle form any cell of the body from heart and brain and liver can be generated from individuals of any ethnic background who are either healthy or diseased of known or unknown genetic background. This is now presenting an unprecedented human model to study both disease and pathology responses to drugs on different genetic backgrounds. Not only may new windows of opportunity be discovered for slowing disease progress, but it also may be uh, possible to target specific diseases, mechanisms, and develop cures. If the symptoms, for example, of the IPS cells and their derivatives can be alleviated, the same result may be achievable in the patients. If adverse drug responses are identified in specific populations, it may be possible to predict these prior to the clinical disaster. IPS cells can differentiate into many disease relevant cell types, including cardiomyocytes, neurons, with efficiencies now approaching those of human ES cells. Therefore, it's now feasible to obtain cardiac and neural cells that capture entire genetic profiles, not only of mutated genes when the gene is known, but also of gene modifiers that play important, largely unknown roles in the pathology of neurological, cardiac, and cancer. Thus, beyond the anticipated use of cell replacement therapy, patient-specific iPS cells have rapidly emerging applications in disease modeling, drug testing, and drug discovery. Brain and heart tissues are particularly inaccessible through patient biopsies. By using reprogrammed patient cells, modeling disease in a dish, as we call it, are being developed, allowing ex experiments that until recently were inconceivable. The concept of uh, IPS cells as patients has also received support from experimental data. Reprogrammed cells from patients with rare disorders are already experimental paradigms provided new clues to how disease manifests and how they might be alleviated or reversed even. The route to clinical application is thus finding novel shortcuts. New diseases are continuously being added to the list of those that can be recapitulated not only genetic, but also sporadic disease forms. The Helmsley Genomic Medicine Initiative will allow the Salk Institute to participate and lead in what we think is a biomedical revolution. Thank you. Thank you, Rusty. Uh, our next speaker who will be talking about genomic medicine is Ron Evans. Ron's an authority on hormones, both their normal activity and roles in disease. A major achievement of his laboratory was the discovery of receptors. These are a large family of chemical switches that respond to various chemicals, including hormones, inside cells that regulate virtually every developmental and metabolic activity in, in the body. He is professor and director of the Gene Expression Laboratory and holds the March of Dimes Chair in Molecular and Developmental Biology. Ron? Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Erwin. Thank you, John and Anne, uh, for making this special uh, day possible. And thank all of you for being here. Uh, and also the people uh, in the labs that really are doing the work that helped make this initiative uh, turn into a reality. I'm delighted to be part of the emergence of the Helmsley Center for Genomic Medicine. This is something that we believe will be both a tremendous boost to our science and also produce a transformative uh, a, a scientific effort that will be not only important here, but will have an impact nationally and hopefully worldwide to address some of the uh, most challenging diseases of our time. How do we get to this initiative? Well, it literally took a village, uh, meaning a great deal of effort was put in by dedicated scientists, by the administration, by the leadership of the board, and also a very close collaboration with the foundation itself. Uh, it was exciting, it was challenging, uh, but it was worthwhile to condense our ideas into something special. Now metabolism and the nutritional medicine part of, of this uh, initiative uh, is really going to deal with the uh, problems and uh, nature of obesity, the obesity epidemic, 
uh, which always seems to be on the front page uh, of the newspaper. It's the source of endless magical diets that I'm sure everyone's familiar with. It's the topic of conversation, at least polite conversation at dinners. Uh, and not to mention, it's the source of countless New Year's resolutions. What was on your list? Uh, the science, however, is much more complicated. It's a problem that is nationwide, it's worldwide, and from the epidemic is born many kinds of diseases uh, and health problems like diabetes, heart disease, uh, high sugars, high fats, uh, and, and high cholesterol. These are all chronic diseases that we need to deal with. Uh, they plague our society, they're difficult to treat, and overcoming it is not an easy task. You just can't say, don't eat. Why? Because we are designed to eat. Rather, it begins with our genes and how they respond to foods, exercise, and the progressive changes that occur within our own bodies. We need to learn how to wake up the genes that burn sugar, wake up the genes that burn fat, and how to quiet down the genes that cause inflammation. The vitality of our bodies depend on the vitality of our genes. That's the core of this uh, initiative. And uh, if the genome gets locked up by chronic disease, the body cannot perform uh, and we get into all sorts of problems. This gets worse as the pounds go up and so we really need to deal with the conjoint issues of the nature of how obesity impacts our bodies over a long span of time. Like a scientific GPS uh, system, there, our technology should help us zero in uh, on the genes that control our metabolic networks. The gene networks, in turn, uh, will produce a roadmap for the discovery of new drugs. And this roadmap that we will produce will be something that will be available to everyone to help uh, develop their own programs around our discoveries. These genomic drugs, we think, will have the power to tackle chronic disease, and that's really the core of the initiative. Now, I've been here for more than 30 years. I hate to admit that, but it's true. And this is one of the most exciting of times uh, since uh, my uh, coming here that back in the late 70s. I think this initiative, the Genomic in uh, Medicine Initiative, will be catalytic, uh, it will produce science that hopefully, uh, to take Jonas's words, will help turn dreams into reality. So thank you again and thanks to the foundation for making this thing a true reality. Thank you all. Thank you, Ron. I'd also just like to, to second uh, what has been said before, that this was at both a collaborative effort and a partnership within the Salk and with, between the Salk and the Helmsley Trust. And I want to thank everyone for their hard work in developing this wonderful partnership. As John Cody mentioned, our relationship with the Trust dates back to 2009 when they gifted $5.5 .5 million grant to study nutrition at the molecular level and its impact on metabolism. And then in 2010, the Trust awarded an additional $15 million to create a collaborative stem cell project. So you can see that their support of the Salk Institute is absolutely extraordinary and continuing. So we're very much grateful to you, John, and to the Trust for your commitment to our science. And now I'd like to call your attention up to the North Building and I'm going to do a countdown because we have a banner that co commemorating this collaboration. And hopefully this will work as well as our science. So ready? Join me. Five, four, three, two, one, fly. All right. All right. <laughs> no, don't jump, Jamie. Don't jump. <laughs> this concludes our presentation. Thank you all for coming, and thanks again to the Helmsley Trust.
shot. Quick, quick shot. Quick, quick picture. Good luck. Good luck.